most valuable commodity I know of is information. Wouldn't you agree? Hey guys, run for here. As you see more side of run for it, this is part of me trying to show you guys what I'm about. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as it able you to release those positive energy for positive results. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. The title of this session is Doubling Your Brain Power, and this is perhaps the most exciting session that we've had the opportunity to talk about, and it's based on our understanding and based on our discovery that every human being is born as a genius. Every single one of us has enormous, untapped reserves of creativity, which we habitually fail to use. And the purpose of this session is to explain to you some of the aspects of your own creativity and show you how to get far, far more out of yourself. We know that in terms of goal setting, in terms of planning for the future, in terms of our aspirations for our income and the things that we want to accomplish, that we can never have any more than we have today simply by sweating harder. The old days where the basic rule was that you worked harder and harder and you hammered away and if you weren't getting results, what you did is you worked harder still, have been passed over and today we know that we live in a totally creative world and that everything that we have today is as a result of the efficiency with which we use our minds. We mentioned this before, and that everything that we have tomorrow is going to be as a result of how we use our creative capacity. The amount of creativity we use is very closely connected to our self-concept and to our attitudes toward ourselves as creative persons. Every child is born with remarkable aspects of creativity. As a matter of fact, in some of the studies they've looked at, they find that 95% of children tested between the ages of 2 and 4 test out as highly creative. Highly creative in that they are imaginative, they're innovative, they're curious, they have tremendous capacities for abstract reasoning and for creating imaginary images. Testing the same children at the age of 7 years, they test out at only 4% creative. In the period between the early years and age seven, children are continually discouraged over and over again from being creative and innovative and letting their imaginations run rampant. Children are continually told that that's foolish or that's silly or you'll have to color between the lines or don't touch that, smell that, taste this, get into that. And children gradually learn at a deep subconscious level that it's not smart to get off of the beaten track. It's not smart to try to look or touch or taste or feel things that mommy and daddy don't approve of. The wonderful thing about creativity is that it's subject to another law which we call the law of use. The law of use simply says that with any human faculty, we either use it or lose it. The creative faculty, however, is never totally lost. What happens is that it goes underground and becomes a latent talent or capability of the human mind, and that we can begin to use our creativity again any time in life that we so decide. The purpose of this course is to show us how to trigger it, how to stimulate it, and how to get far more out of it. As a matter of fact, it's been said that necessity is the mother of invention, and if that's so, then creativity is the father. Ralph Waldo Emerson said that we live in the lap of an immense intelligence, and he described this immense intelligence as though it were an ether that surrounded the earth, like a huge mainframe computer into which every one of us can tap. This has been called throughout all of history things like the oversoul, or infinite intelligence, or the universal subconscious mind, or the collective unconscious, and we are going to talk about this aspect of human creativity as the superconscious mind. This superconscious mind is so much vaster than our own individual intelligence, and it is something that we use on a random and haphazard basis all the time. If you've ever had the experience of being working on a problem or trying to achieve a goal or being wrestling with some dilemma, and as you're walking along or driving along, an idea shoots into your mind like a bolt, and it's the perfect idea? Or have you ever had the example, for instance, where you have been thinking about someone, and they telephone you, and the phone rings, and it's them? Or you've called someone else, and they say, I was just thinking about you just when you telephoned. We have examples of this all the time, where we have these almost unearthly bolts from the blue that seem to indicate that we have the ability to tap into a different form of intelligence than anything that is taught in the textbooks. And the purpose of this session is to explain how this works, because by using this superconscious capability, we find that we can dramatically improve the quality of our results and move faster toward the achievement of our goals than by using any other human faculty. There's a book by Richard Buck called Cosmic Consciousness, where Buck goes back over several hundred years of the most creative men and women of all time and finds that virtually every single one of them spoke about in their writings of an ability to tap into a higher form of consciousness. This superconscious mind is characterized by some of the following things. First of all, it's the source of all pure creativity. All great creative geniuses, all great innovations, all major breakthroughs in human history have come as the result of superconscious functioning. 
Some of the people who have written about using the superconscious function are, for instance, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Emerson said that he never wrote anything of his own volition, but he just simply acted as a conduit for this oversoul or this infinite intelligence, and it would pour through him, and the words would flow out onto paper, word perfect come through his brain almost as if he were tapped into an unearthly power source. Mozart, for instance, considered the greatest musician of all time, wrote his music note perfect the first time. When he sat down to write, he said the entire music, the entire symphony, the entire opus would come into his mind and he would simply transcribe it onto paper. And people who have read Mozart's music, even at the time he was writing, said it was the most beautiful music ever written down on paper. And he wrote it without corrections, without changes, note perfect the very first time. Beethoven was deaf from the age of 35. Most of his great works were written after he was totally deaf. And Beethoven also said that the symphonies came full-blown into his mind and he simply transcribed them on paper. Edison, the greatest inventor of the modern age, used this superconscious capability over and over again to tap into a higher power and used it for coming up with inventions and insights and so on. Michael Faraday considered the father of electromagnetic field theory an uneducated man who had tremendous abilities to use this superconscious capability and pioneered the work that led to the development of the vacuum tube by DeForest, which led to the radio industry, the television industry, the electronic industry, the transistor, microelectronics, the microelectronic chip, the entire set of principles came to him in a dream and he got up in the middle of the night and he sat down and he wrote page after page after page of scientific formulations which later when taken down to the laboratory and tested were found to be absolutely perfectly precise and brand new in all of human history they had never been written or discovered or worked out before Every one of us has had the occasion of using this superconscious creativity where we're going through our day-to-day -day lives and we see a product or a service that we think should be used or think that somebody should be producing. And we say, I wonder why somebody doesn't offer that or I wonder why somebody doesn't invent that. And then two or three or four years later, we see a major... ...corporation comes out with exactly the product that we thought of two or three years ago and goes on to make millions and millions of dollars. The difficulty with our creativity is not that we do not have the same insights as the geniuses, but it's this one small distinction. The geniuses trust and believe in the value of their insights and in the value of the thoughts and the ideas that come to them, whereas we do not. We think of these ideas and we think, well, th this idea can't be of any use. It, only, it came from me. It's my idea. And so we wait until we see somebody else come up with the idea, which may not even be as good as the idea we originally had, and we say, isn't that person intelligent? Look what a wonderful idea they've come up with. Well, many of us think that our creativity is limited by our IQ, that our creativity is limited by the years of education we had or the grades that we got in school, that somehow creativity is something that only scientists and artists and musicians and painters have or poets or writers. The fact of the matter is that creativity is a very simple concept. And to boil it down to its simplest words is that all creativity is simply a way of improving on the existing way of doing things. Every creativity is an improvement. And to the degree to which we have the ability to find ways to improve the way that we do things in any area, we are creative individuals. And the more we use our creativity, like the more we use a muscle, the more of it we have. Another characteristic of this superconscious capability or the superconscious mind is that it has access when it computes for us. It has access to all data stored in our subconscious mind and it has the ability to discriminate between valid and invalid data. In other words, when we program a goal or a problem into our subconscious minds and ask the subconscious mind to solve it for us, the subconscious mind passes it on to the superconscious capability. The superconscious capability, when it computes and calculates to solve the problem or give us ideas to help us move toward our goal, has the ability to take all of the data that we've taken in in the course of our lifetime and stored in the subconscious mind and sort out from that data what is valid and what is true and discard the rest when it computes. That's why whenever you get an idea, whenever you get one of these flashes that come into your mind that answers a question perfectly, you will find that in every single case the answer is correct in every detail. Another characteristic of this superconscious capability is that it brings us ideas that lie outside of our own individual experience. Often we will get ideas that are totally new and that come totally from without outside the experience, the education, the knowledge that we've had in the past. This is why most of the great breakthroughs in science and technology today are coming from small corporations, individuals working in private research laboratories. Very few of the major breakthroughs come from the big companies. The big companies will take the major breakthroughs and develop them and commercialize them, but almost invariably, these major breakthroughs are coming from people sometimes who have not even been in the field before, but they get ideas and insights into doing things in a new or different way that are completely unique and original and that lead to the opening up of entire new industries. It reminds me of a story of a small boy who came to the scene of an accident. The police had cordoned off the road and a bridge where a truck 
driving at 40 or 50 miles an hour had tried to drive under the bridge and become stuck underneath the bridge. And the traffic was cordoned off, and there were several tow trucks trying to pull the truck out from under the bridge. And the little boy came to the edge of the crowd, and he asked the policeman, he said, what's going on? And the policeman said, well, the truck is stuck under the bridge. He said, what are they doing? He said, they're trying to pull it out. And they just weren't able to pull it out. The truck was too solidly jammed under the bridge. So the little boy looked past the policeman and looked up at him and said, why don't they let the air out of the tires? And the policeman looked down at him, and he looked back at all those drawn men trying to pull this truck out from under the bridge, and he shook his head and went back down the hill. And that's exactly what they did. They let the air out of the tires, and the truck just backed out as easy as pie. The little boy had the ability to see things from a different perspective, and every single one of us has that capability. The superconscious mind is the source of all creativity, all intuition, all flashes of insight, all hunches. The superconscious mind is the source of inspiration and motivation and the ability to see things in a brand new way. The superconscious mind is the source of new ideas that help us move toward goal attainment. And the superconscious mind is available to each one of us like a power source that we can plug into simply by finding the plug. Another characteristic of the superconscious mind is that it functions on a non-conscious level 24 hours per day. It is always working to resolve the problems that we are mulling over and to move us toward achieving the goals that we have programmed into the subconscious. Another characteristic of the superconscious is that it's capable of goal-oriented motivation. For goal-oriented motivation, it requires clear, specific goals. Now, you can imagine, using this superconscious capability, imagine that you had an enormous computer, the most complex computer, the most sophisticated computer ever built in the universe, and you had an entire team of the most accomplished computer experts that had ever been trained, and they were at your service. And you could go to them with any problem or any goal, and they could put it into the computer, and they could give you the answer, or they could give you the ideas that you would need to achieve the goal. Nonetheless, even with the most sophisticated computer and the most intelligent computer operators, there is nothing that they could do if you could not define the problem for them or if you could not clearly tell them what it is that you wanted to accomplish. This is why we talked before about how important it is to have a very clear, specific idea of the goals that we want to accomplish. The superconscious mind is invariably triggered by clarity of definition and by decisiveness. The more decisive and clear we are about what we want, what we want to accomplish, what problems we want to resolve, the more rapidly the superconscious capability goes to work to bring the answers into our lives. Another characteristic of the superconscious mind in terms of goal-oriented motivation is that it releases ideas and energy for goal attainment. If ever you've had the experience of working on something that you are really excited about, that you are really emotionally involved in, something that you really wanted, or something that really inspired you, you will remember that at that point, you seem to have a continuous flow of ideas and energy. You seem to be bubbling with energy. Sometimes you could go on only four or five hours sleep a night. Sometimes your mind would just crackle with ideas, and you had this feeling of continuous excitement, like sometimes you could barely sleep. This is an example of superconscious energy. It releases free energy from the atmosphere and makes it available to us to enable us to move toward goal attainment. And we'll explain that a little bit more as we go along. Another characteristic of the superconscious is that it responds to clear authoritative commands. And the clear authoritative commands we give to our superconscious capability are in the form of positive affirmations. Every time we affirm positively from the conscious mind